So by saying more than just you need common denominator, how can you explain why this can't be true? Pretty much saying common denominator. Then it would be 624. You're all resting on, you need a common denominator. I didn't say Least common multiple, least common denominator is the same thing. Okay. It's wrong because it's not three fifths. Three-fifths and six-tenths are equivalent. If I had uh, six-tenths of something, I'd have three-fifths of something, I'd have the same amount. Okay, so it's this part that's not true. So why is it not true? What? I feel like it is true. Okay. I can assure you it's not. But what I want to accomplish today is to help you understand why it is not. Because how many times have you been told to get a common denominator? Yeah. Never heard of a common denominator. I've heard of it, but I've never really told to do that. I and mean, this is what we did last week in the right? No. False. Never told you that that would be right. You might be thinking of multiplication. Yeah. No, you told us to add straight across. No, I did not. That would multiply straight across. Oh, well, yeah. I had them come like that. Right. Okay. 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 All together, you got to take good notes. Pay attention. You know why I said the multiply three. Can anybody explain why? Like, basically, we're trying to answer the question: Why do you need a common denominator? Why can you not add or subtract fractions without having a common denominator? Like, if you were to compare. to show the other fraction. Yes. Now we're Five. getting somewhere. There you go. Talking about comparing these together. Now, you can't get both of those fractions together when they're not made up of the same parts. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. There's a good explanation of <coughs> why. Like, how do you find a common denominator? That you need a common denominator? We've been We've been doing that since yeah. fifth grade, maybe fourth grade, adding fractions, right? If by now you still are getting six tenths, maybe it's time to take a look at why you need to come to denominator so that you don't make that mistake anymore, okay? <coughs> so here's a picture of, uh, well, this is kind of a picture of six, six, or zero, six, and I look at it. So we'll shade in five of them, and now we are talking about five sixths. And here's one fourth. So when I try to take these five things and add one other different thing to it, but now I can see why it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. This is not six of something. Okay. Because there's three for how many two zeros in that one? Three for mm -hmm. however many two. Okay, yeah. so three of these goes with two of these, which is kind of getting us somewhere, right? Yeah. We're kind of making them the same. Not quite all the way there, but we're starting to get it. So they're just, they're not the same thing. And that's as simple as it is. Why do you need to have a denominator? Because the denominator is telling you what the <coughs> thing is. And if the denominators were different, the things are different. Right? Mm -hmm. Those are the same. Agreed? Yeah. Okay. If you never make this mistake, if you, ne if you never make this mistake, then that's great. You should still pay attention. Because then when you're in your 30s, maybe you have some kids to add some fractions. Why did you come to that? I was the one with calculator. It doesn't explain anything. <laughs> yeah, I see more problem. mistakes from people who are reliant on their calculators from those who are not. I'll give them a Google. Calculator. Anyway, okay. if you Google why do we come to the denominator, you'll get something like this. 
So adding 5, 6, <coughs> and 1 fourth, 86 tenths, a kind of a made up thing, is the same as uh, saying 5 apples plus 1 oranges, 6 apple oranges. And just made up a thing for all of them to be, and said there's 6 of them. But an apple's not an orange, an orange is not an apple, neither an apple nor an orange are an a florange, a thing that doesn't exist. Okay? <laughs> The point here being, when we say 5, 6 plus 1 fourth is 6 tenths, we're just making it up. <coughs> we're adding two things that don't go together, and we're making up a thing to call them. Okay? This is how many you have. This is what it is. Right? This is how many you have. This is what it is. You have 5, 6, and 6 are different from fourths, just like apples are different from oranges. Now that apples and oranges, there's no way to fix this. I can't make them the same thing, exactly the same thing. They're both fruit, but they're not exactly the same thing. It just doesn't work. So, with apples and oranges, there's no way to fix it. But with fractions, <coughs> there is a way to make these two different things into the same thing. Let's look at this picture, okay? Yeah. Let's talk about, they're different, right? So what is different about six and fourths? What's different about them? I'm gonna make five. Six to one. Six in the whole one, there's four in the whole. Okay? Yeah. Yes, that is fundamentally different about like six. Well, let's, let's talk about, um, what's different about one sixth compared to one fourth? Okay, Shelby continues to carry every one of her shoulders today. Uh, I guess Shelby's back today. I have the wrong That's right. There's the different sizes. Okay. Can we somehow do some little trickery here and make it so that? These things are the same size as these things. Cut the, <laughs> cut the force up into more pieces. Cut the force into more pieces. How about cutting the sixth into more pieces as well? No. No? no? Okay. How many, we cut the force well, into how many? What? Well, I mean, if you had to find a common denominator, you have to do that. Well, the 12 is common We need these things to be the same. Yeah. So well, you and what's different about them right now is that they're different sizes. So somehow I need to get the pieces in this hole to be the same size as the pieces in this hole. Okay. And I'm starting with fourths and sixths. Let's cut the, let's cut the fourths into pieces, because that's, that's the idea you put fourths, so let's cut them into two pieces each. Let's see. Yeah. You've got to make them all the same size, right? That's important. That's eight. So how many pieces are there? Eight. eight. Can I get this to be an eight equal yes. pieces? Yes. No. no. Yeah. How do I do it? Cut one in half. Will they all equal? Are all the pieces, then, all of them the same size as each other? No. No. That's the problem. We need them all to be the same size. Oh, right. Well, so you got to keep cutting it. Until so cut this differently. Yeah. So then you'll have 24 well, pieces. Oh, cut it into half a uh, potatoes. Four. <laughs> well, that's 25. Let's do this. Four. 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 How about, about instead of cutting these in half each, cut them each into three pieces? Aha. Okay. Three, one, two, three. One, two, three. How many pieces are there now? Nine. Twelve. There are four to start with. Twelve. We cut each of the four into three pieces. That's four groups of three. Four times twelve. three is twelve. Can we cut the six pieces up so that we end up with twelve pieces? Yes. yes. Oh, just cut them in half. Lord, cut them in half. <laughs> we cut each of the six pieces into two pieces each. So how many pieces are there now? Twelve. So do I have the same kind of things here as I do here? Yes. Now they're the same kind of thing. What we just did, whether you spotted it or not, was find a common denominator. Yes. We made the pieces the same size. How did that find the common denominator? The common denominator is 12. Oh. oh. Okay. What we did is we came through and we first took every of the four pieces and made it into three pieces, right? tripling the number of pieces, but making the pieces smaller. 
because we cut each of the pieces into two pieces each. No, I was thinking six times four is twelve, and we're going to just multiply by six. Oh, you could. I could take the six pieces and cut them into four pieces each, take each of these four pieces, cut them into six pieces each, and they would have 24. Oh, then why would we do that? Because it's more work than we have to do. Oh. It would be right. It would and be correct. It would just be more work than you'd have to do. Okay. You could do less work. Okay. Um, no, it wouldn't because what you have to do is wrong, you have to do the top. And then the numerator wouldn't be right. Because oh. I got uh, one fourth when I did that. and. Well, here, getting hold something on. Else. The six pieces we cut into two pieces each, but you'll notice we can't we can't do that without doing that also to the five pieces that were mm -hmm. that we were talking about. So we cut those into two pieces each. So we got twice as many of those pieces, mm -hmm. right? but they're smaller. Same thing here. This one piece is now three pieces. It's not six tenths. Mm -hmm. We have twelve pieces in the whole. We have ten of those. Here we took the four pieces, cut them into three each, so that it now we have a whole that's cut into 12 pieces. And we have three of those pieces here. So we get 13 twelfths or one. So one and one twelfths. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. If you left it 24 Well, no. Let's see. If I were to. Okay, if there's really just and we have to do it to the numerator too, so it's four times as many here, but also four times as many here. So the end of ratio is the same. Five to six is the same as uh, 20 to 24. So why can you not say five, six plus one fourth is six tenths? Someone other than Shelby. Why can we not add together fifth, sixths, and fourths? Six and fourths. Why can't we just add them up and say, oh, we got six? It's exactly right, 100%. Couldn't be any more right than that. There are two different things. Okay. What is different about them? What's Everything. different about a sixth and a fourth? What's that? Everything. Everything's different. Well, they're both pieces of whole. Their both. value. Their value and their both. size. Their size. Okay. Their value. Their size. Right. A sixth is less than a fourth. A yeah. sixth is not the same as a fourth. If we look at this piece as a whole, a sixth is smaller than a fourth. Okay. So what we need to do is fix that problem of them being different sizes or different values. To okay. so make them the same size, we're looking at the picture by cutting them into more pieces. Or when you look at the numbers, you're multiplying the denominator by two to get this denominator to be 12. Multiply this one by three to get this denominator to be 12. But if I just multiply this by two, then I'm saying I have five twelfths. So I don't five twelfths, I have five six, which is the same as having ten twelfths. Okay. What's this number that I just put parentheses around? One. It's one. Right here. Oh, yeah, that's one. That's one. Two divided by two is one. I can't change the numbers that I was given. I can't just make them worth more or worth less. Nine is worth more than one. Right. You can change what they look like. I can't change how many I have, but I can change what they look like. They just look like smaller pieces now. Mm -hmm. That's what really happened here. Okay. If we're just looking at straight numbers, I've taken the number 5, 6 and multiplied it by 1. When you multiply by 1, what happens? You just get whatever the number was that you started with. Mm -hmm. Multiply this by 1, but in this form of 1, multiply this guy by 1. Mm -hmm. three. Okay. So they're worth the same amount, they're just as big just as small as they used to be. Okay. But the pieces themselves are all the same size as each other. Now I can compare the same thing to the same thing okay. add them together. Do I need to get a common denominator when I multiply? No. Why not? Because if you don't exceed a cross, it's going to happen either way. Okay, we know, uh, no, right? If I got common denominators, then I just know that I'm supposed to multiply straight across. And I'm just going to make more work for myself in the end. I'm just going to have to simplify for sure if I do that. And also because the reason why we need to make the same denominators here is because they need to be the same thing because we're trying to collect them together. That's what addition is. Multiplication is not collecting together the same things. Okay. Can I add apples and oranges? No. Can I add 
Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about zebras and lions. What's that? You add zebras and lions. Can you add zebras and lions? No, because the lion will kill the zebra. Exactly. You can't. That'd be subtraction. Yeah. <laughs> That's subtraction. <laughs> <laughs> it's really adding zebras into lions' bellies. Horses and zebras. Okay, <laughs> but can I multiply, say, uh, can I add people and M&Ms? Can I add people and M&Ms? Yes. Or can, you can, <laughs> or can no. I say five people plus 20 M&Ms is? No, you cannot. Oh, it's diabetes. diabetes. <laughs> can I multiply five people times 20 yes. M&Ms? No. Yes. Would that kind of make sense? Yeah. You divide 20 yes, M&M you per person? Yeah, you divide oh. 20 M&Ms into okay. five people. Okay. How about five? if I'm saying multiply five people I'm times 20 M&Ms, I'm kind of saying five people, each one of them has five 20 M&Ms. Oh. If I do 20 divided by five, yeah. yeah. But if I do five times 20, five people, each with 20 M&Ms, five people times 20 M&Ms, right? You can do five, you can do five apple trees equals one orange tree. No, no, five apple trees times how many apples? And then 20 apples per tree. Yeah. And get how many apples? So we have these different units, and we can multiply them together. We can't add different units together. Yeah. So if we're going to add things together, they have to be the same. Subtraction, we can make them the same, we can make them the same size. We always can do that. Even if we have to, as Wyatt said, if we have to, uh, let's use this example, say three fourths. Uh, plus uh, two thirds. No. Only way that I can cut something that's in fourths and something that's in thirds so that they have the same number of pieces is to cut these into four and these into, oh sorry, I had that backwards. Cut these into three pieces each and cut these into four pieces. It's the only way, and then I'll get 12. If they, if they share a factor, right, then they don't need to use that factor twice. Oh. Let's practice it. Four sevenths plus Why can I not add these four things to these nine things? What's that? I was just I was talking about the denominator, it's not the numerators. All right, come back. So why can't I add these four things to these nine things? What are they? What are they? Yeah. What's the? Why is that important to ask? Because you can't you can't have like. You can't have like four clocks and four community boards. They're two different, different, work. different things. They're different work. Yeah. So what different things do we have here? We have four and a nine. <laughs> no, it's not that four and the nine that's making the problem. We got a seven and a fourteen. Okay. So this is how many we have, and this is what it is. What does it mean? Seven. What's a seven? Seven of seven of something. Or four of something split into seven football players. Seven. Okay, so seven. it's a piece of a whole. It's a it's a whole that's been cut into seven pieces. <laughs> seven of these. Makes one thing. Okay. What are these things? Sir, what? The creepers. What are these things? Uh, what? Where are they? Fourteenths. What's that? Fourteenths. You have fourteenths. These nine things are fourteenths. You have nine of these things. Fourteenths. That means you have little pieces of a of a pie. 14 of those pieces to make it a whole. <coughs> so four sevenths and nine fourteenths, we cannot put them together. They are two different things. They're different sizes. Well, we saw by the picture that if we multiply either or both of these, what we're representing is like cutting the whole thing into smaller pieces. So how do I do that? If I wanted to cut this into more pieces, could I cut it into more pieces so I wind up with the yes. same as this? No. Wyatt? <laughs> how to do it? Take those seven pieces and cut them into how many pieces? Each. You got nine divided by two, which so would make it into 14 pieces. 
and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five. I would cut each of these, these are seven pieces. They don't look quite right, but there is seven. Cut them in half. Cut them in half. Yeah. Half, half, half. That makes 14. That makes 14. So I, I just double those, I gotta double these, Eight. right? And then you times the other side by one. Because Eight it doesn't 14. need to change. Right, yeah. it does not need to be different. I can just take this pie and just cut the pieces up so that I have the same number as this. One and three fourteenths. Let's look at a picture of 17 fourteenths. Here's a pie. How many fourteenths are in this pie? Zero. Shade them all in. Shade them all in, then. There's 14. There's 14. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. So 14 fourteenths is one thing, one whole. Right? And I have a few more. I have three fourteenths. There's the fourteenths, and there's the fourteenths, and there's another fourteenths. One and three fourteenths. How many fourteenths? If I just counted the number of fourteenths that I have. How many here? 14. 15, 16, 17. Yeah. Right. So when I say 17 fourteenths, if I just like throw them all out there randomly scattered, I could assemble 14 of them into how many? The whole, the whole thing. Oh, never mind. Do the whole thing, and then I have three left over. Okay. If I had 14 more, I could make a second one. If I had 14 after that, I could make a third one. Right? Yeah. But we only have enough to make one, and we have three extras left. I don't like pie. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's actually. So finding a common denominator, it's not a rule. It's not the law. It's not what you're supposed to do. It's not what you have to do. Okay? It's making these things the same thing, making these pieces the same size as each other so that it makes sense to add them together. So if you ever don't find a common denominator, if you ever add them together in the wrong way, I'm going to remind you to need a common denominator because the denominator is telling us how big the pieces are. And if we're going to add pieces together, they better be the same size. But what if it's not going to make any sense? Yeah. OK. One more? cut them all the same and wind up with 12 pieces, right? Because that's not going to work. The common denominator cannot be 12. What if I try again? I try dividing it into not two pieces, but three pieces. 
work. Now how many pieces would I have over here? How many pieces is this pie cut into now that I had six to start with and I cut them each into three? How many pieces is this made of? What's that? 18. Six pieces to start with, three pieces each, cut them into three pieces each. Six times three is 18. Can we cut this? Yes. Two pieces, so that it consists of 18 pieces? Yes. Half and half. Double. Yeah. All in half. Nine pieces to start with, each cut into two pieces. How many pieces is that? 18. 18 pieces. 21. 21. No, it's just a thing. It's just, it's just, I, I got the answer. Like, yeah, so now we're talking about 18ths here and here. So they're the same. Yeah. How many 18ths are here? There are, um, um, uh, there are 15. Oh, 15. 15. There, remember, these pieces we cut into three pieces each. Mm -hmm. All of them. Even these five here. So at the same time they were Breaking those into three pieces each, or breaking these into three pieces each, we have 15 <coughs> yeah. Divide that three out of both of these, you get back to five, six. Mm -hmm. Same. Mm -hmm. Simplify that, you get five, six. Yep. How many 18s do we have here? We have five ninths to start with. Ten. Cut them into two pieces each. We have 10. 25 18s. Which is one, seven, three, seven, 18. What? Seven. 18. My bad. One and seven. seven. 18. So, adding fractions. Yes. We cannot add things that do not have the same denominator because the denominator is saying how big of a piece we're talking about. If they're different pieces, they're different sizes, you can't put them together. It's already done. Now, uh, what we have here? Three fourths. Divide, divide it, not divide it. Divide it by five eighths. I agree that. Give it a try. Give you a minute or so for uh, what they've been taught. That's good. I'm talking. I'll talk. Complicated stuff. All right. So I'm just going to do is all math. Okay? It's not a trick. It's not a. Uh, Acronym, it's not a memory trick, it's just it's the math. I'm going to turn this into a different kind of a problem that we already know how to do. It's a little easier. First, just remember this is one big number, right? it's, a, it's just a big fraction. Three fourths divided by five eighths. Okay? I'm going to multiply this fraction by a number. All of it, or just the one? one? Just the whole thing. Just the entire thing. So, what number can I multiply by? It doesn't cause any problems. I can multiply by one. I can't multiply by zero. That's going to make it zero. I can't multiply by two because then it's twice as big as it was to start with. I can't make it twice as big. I need to leave it the same sign. Okay. So I'm going to multiply by one. Okay. So just keep in mind that what I'm about to write down is equivalent to one. It's a really tall one. I'm fading it out so you just remember the thing I'm about to write down is the same as one. What is that? That's a big tall one. I'm going to multiply it, okay? When I multiply fractions, I multiply straight across. Okay? So I multiply this numerator, by this numerator, by this denominator, by this denominator. And here's a little bit of a tricky thing. Like, I'm going to choose a really clever thing to multiply by a numerator and denominator. And as long as they're the same, it's okay, right? Like, if I multiply by 3 over 3, that'll be fine, because that's 1. Multiply by 5 over 5, that's okay, that's 1. As long as the number divided by itself. The number that I'm going to put over itself is 8 fifths. 8 fifths divided by 8 fifths is 1. So I'm not changing anything. Nothing bad is happening. I'm not multiplying it by 2. I'm not making it twice. Right. So 8 fifths is just a reciprocal of yeah. 5 eighths. Now let's see what happens here. Let's look at the denominator. So to multiply this, this larger fraction, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Multiply these together. Multiply straight across here. We get 5 times 8 is 40. And 8 times 5 is. What's 40 divided by 40? One. This what? is just one down here. 
So in the denominator, we have one. When you divide by one, what happens? Four divided by one is? Four. Seven divided by one? Seven. X divided by one? X. X. Just whatever it was, there it still is. <coughs> so in the numerator, I multiply three-fourths times eight-fifths. So I'll just go ahead and multiply straight across. 24 over 20. And I can simplify it, but there it is. That is what 3 fourths divided by 5 eighths is, because I can justify it by a few steps. I can multiply numbers by 1, that's fine. When I multiply these reciprocals together, I just get 1 in the denominator, which means that when I take 24 divided by 20, it doesn't change anything. It's divided by 1, it's still 24 divided by 20. I'll just go ahead and simplify this, and that'll be it. Right? Divide them both by 4, 6. I got a different answer. You told me yeah, I got one and one fifth. Same. What is six fifths? Five but you said you were like, hey, good job. Like, yeah, <laughs> thanks, Mr. Stewart. <laughs> what is six fifths? Six fifths is an well, improper fraction. Yes. True. You said you simplify, though. It's one and one fifth. Six fifths is five fifths. And another fifth. Oh, I get it. Six <laughs> fifths or one and one fifth. Yeah. They're the same. So at least the way that like the words in my head roll around. Simplify means to me divide out the common factor here. So this is not simplifying but writing as a mixed number. If you call it simplifying, then I apologize for the confusion. Okay. That's what I call simplifying. <coughs> Right. Mixed number going on top. That's called an improper fraction. Well, that's yeah, called a mixed number. But that's how you simplify. You get to the non number. I'm not going to argue that. I mean, you could call that simplified. I could agree. But when I say simplify, I strictly think take out the common factor that they have. And then the other thing I call writing as a mixed number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So now, if I were to ask you to like do this problem and, and write it in simple form, this is fine and this is fine too. I wouldn't, in my mind, say that this is simpler than this or that this is simpler than that. Okay. Just because that's the way that I do. Sometimes words are just not quite as well defined as we like. How would you take it? If you think that's the simplest, write it that way. If you think this is just fine and this is simple, that's fine too. Maybe. All right, uh, five eighths divided by four <laughs> But also, uh, at the same time, see a little bit of confusion. Let's go back real quick and remind ourselves the thing that was nice was that we wound up with a 1 down here. Okay, what is it? Something divided by 1 is just that thing. So, <coughs> we're going to multiply this so that we get a 1 down here. Is it, is it important that you use the, the denominator of that big fraction? Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens when we do the opposite. Of this okay. okay. Uh, so use seven fourths, right? That's the reciprocal of four sevenths. What's four times seven? Twenty-eight. What's seven times four? Twenty-eight. What's twenty-eight divided by twenty-eight? One. So we did what we wanted to do. We got a one. So whatever this is, when you multiply it together, it's divided by one. So it's just is that is whatever five eighths times seven fourths is. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. Thirty. Yeah. Thirty seconds. Thirty-two. Yeah. Thirty-two. Just kidding. Thirty-two. <laughs> I fell for it too. Thirty-five. Thirty seconds. Yes. Okay. Thirty-five. Thirty seconds. One and two. Thirty seconds. One and one. Thirty seconds. One and three. Yeah. One and three. Thirty seconds. One and three. Thirty seconds. So let's see what uh, what happened if we do what Shelby was asking about. Thirty seconds. 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 Thirty seconds.
what if we multiply by 8 fifths over 8 fifths, the reciprocal of the numerator <coughs> instead of the denominator? And then going straight across the bottom. So, well, the numerator we'll get 5 times 8 is 40, 8 times 5 so is 40, so we get 1. 1 of a fraction. 1 over a fraction. Yeah. So then, you know, we still have this kind of messy fraction and a fraction. Yeah. Still, yes. So here we have 4 times 8 is 32, and 7 times 5 is 75. So what we have is 1 over the reciprocal of the fraction. Yeah. And it's in simplified form. The good news is, one over a fraction is just the reciprocal of that fraction. So 1 over 32 30 fifths is the same as 35 30 seconds. We multiply by 1. That's OK. You never think correctly mathematically. This is the correct answer, or it's equivalent to the correct answer. You wouldn't say it. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't, I mean, you don't want to do that. You want to do the You want to get a 1 in the denominator. Wind up with a one in the numerator, it gives us a funky fraction and a fraction. Uh, Good. Subtraction is addition. Trying to go with the denominator and subtract instead of add. So what's that thing I was saying you could just kind of cut out a step? Like if I want to divide 5 eighths by 4 sevenths. Right? No, it's just getting out of paying attention to the bottom half. Oh. Like well, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, what happens is like the new the denominator is always 1. That's the whole idea with this trick. Is the denominator is always 1. In the numerator you always have 5 eighths, you know, the numerator times what? Reciprocal of the of the thing you're dividing by, the denominator. Or oh, so it doesn't even have to do that thing. Right, you don't even have to, you know, do the step of multiplying out the denominator to get one. You can just kind of say like, well, I know that's what happens, so I won't even bother writing all of this. Right. That part's always the same. Like in math or anything computer programming where we see patterns, we try and just kind of not do that same thing over and over and over unnecessarily. So 5 eighths divided by 4 sevenths, I'll just write a new problem, 5 eighths times 7 fourths, and I've got it. Okay. We don't want to make this mistake and multiply 4 sevenths by 8 fifths, because that's actually the reciprocal of what we already have. Um, so now what I want you to do is I want you to get a piece of paper out, because you're going to write, you're going to have to keep track of some numbers. We got a piece of paper, ready to write this down. Okay. So I want you to lose track. Mm -hmm. And after this, we're going to have to keep track of even more numbers. So okay. here we go. Start off with you. What I want you to do is pick a number, any number you want. Number one number. Don't tell me what it is. Uh, okay, so pick a different number. Call the number card, so pick on it. Okay, so pick a number, whatever it is. All right, so here's the first thing you're going to do to that number. You're going to multiply by 2. Okay. Okay, <coughs> down. With that number, you add 10. <coughs> With that new number that you get, divide that by 2. Subtract that number that you started with. Whatever it was. Is everybody there? Subtract mm -hmm. two, no, not yet. Oh, 
Oh, sorry, that's not two. <coughs> that, that's a question mark representing the number you picked in the first place. Subtract the number you started with. So those steps again, multiply by two, add 10, divide by two, and subtract the number you started with. Right. Did all that right, you should really get at the number five. Oh my yeah. gosh, wizard, Seven. wizard. Five. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> magic. Yeah. Get down to here, get to the chopper. I got five. Oh, yeah. Two billion. Try with two billion? Four billion. Try with four billion, two billion? Four billion, ten. ten. We already tried with supposedly a lot of different numbers because everybody in the class. I did it with ten trillion. You did it with ten trillion? I did it with fifty-two. Good. Kept track of all that. I got Try with any number you want. I'm gonna try with one. You'll always get five. Try with five. Really? I tried with six nine. I got six. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do six. Oh no, it's five. Five. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we tried with a lot of different numbers. Everybody. What about zero? Yeah. I don't think. That's a number. Zero. Zero is a number, but it doesn't show zero. Zero over. Crap, man. Wait, wait, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. We gotta think about this. <laughs> <laughs> we have to think of an odd no, number. Right? It wasn't even a while. Seven. 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 Negative five. 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 Subtract my original number. Oh, subtract negative 12. So as add oh my god, I win. What the heck? I win. What's negative 7 plus 12? 5. five. five. Oh, seven. don't win, oh. God. So good. Hold on. Hold on. Like no, I don't want to go number A. Have you done a video on it? It's like that guy, and he like makes you choose ten marks or else. And then like you choose a number at the beginning of the video. Yeah. If you did seven and a half, have you done it? Still would work. Seven and a half would work. Any decimal fraction? We just proved negative. Well, we didn't prove negative. We found an example of negative. Yeah. Here's what we're gonna do. Instead of saying, what about this number, what about that number, and trying out every number we can think of, we're going to use, if you don't get five, you made a mistake. Dark house. Guarantee. Seven, seven, how much is that? All right, what number do you have? Negative eight. Negative eight times two. Add ten. Divide by two. Add negative eight. Add. Or sorry, subtract negative eight, add eight. Subtract. Oh, subtract negative eight. No, wait, how do you, why do you get the three? Because negative 16, 16 plus 10, you have a negative and a positive, Shelby, so it's going to be negative six. But the options went through you, okay, so you got 16. It wasn't a negative, because it was, well, yeah, it was. But add 10. Add 10. Okay, now I see. Subtract the negative, and then you're adding positive. Why are you subtracting the okay. negative? See, dang it. Okay, subtract the original number is the last part. Oh, yeah. never mind, just there. You have the original number. Here's what we're going to do. How does this work? How does it work? No, don't answer that. Don't answer that. Don't. Okay? Don't answer that. 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 Don't any number of anybody's choosing, okay, we're talking about algebra. How in algebra do we represent those numbers that could be any number? 
x with x variables. Okay? X. Now, do you remember the steps that I need to do? Yes. yes. Do those steps on x. The That's not possible. Yeah, you can. You can do anything. That's possible. X like, yes. what was the first step? Times two. Times two. Can I multiply x times two? Yeah. Yes. What is this? Two x. X plus ten. <laughs> no, it's you two x. Add ten. Plus ten. Yeah, but how do you do that? <laughs> That's not possible. Well, okay. Divide so, two. multiply by 2, add 10. What do we do with the result? Subtract it by 2. Divide it by almost. 2. Divide by 2. Okay. Oh, that's what I, Oh, haha. And then what? And then subtract the number. What's the number? X. X. All we have to do now is <coughs> simplify this expression. It will become a lot less amazing. I, think, I basically made you do stuff and then do the opposite of that stuff, but in a slightly tricky way. So 2x plus 10, maybe to make this a little easier to look at, I'm going to write this. Is this the same as this? Oh my god, it is. Okay. Because these are two fractions. What do these two fractions have in common? <coughs> uh, we just talked about at the beginning of class. No. The denominators, they have common denominators, right? How would I add this fraction? I can't really add them because I have a 2x here, but whatever 2x is, I would do 2x plus 10. Whatever this is, I would add 10. That would be the numerator and the denominator too. So this, to write this is the same as to write these two fractions. Now what's 10 divided by 2? 5. 5, so we have that much of it is 5 minus x. What's 2x divided by 2? 2x's, or I'm half of that, but that's just 1x. Okay. What do you see there? X minus, minus, two. X minus, five minus x. x minus what? <coughs> x minus x plus 5. What's x minus x? 0. X yeah. minus 2. So essentially, let's go back one step. All I really made you do is take a number, add 5 to it, take the number away, of course you're left with 5. You can see that with algebra, it's hard to do when you're thinking, well, let me just try every number that I can possibly imagine. 21. You test it out. This proves, beyond a doubt, no matter what number you pick, all I'm doing is making you take the number, subtract it from itself, which always cancels itself out to zero, and add five. Zero plus five is five. Right? A lot less magical. So is that five again? That is essentially what I'm having to do. I make you go through all these other steps, multiply by 2, add 10, divide by 2, and subtract your number. But essentially all I'm really having you do is take a number, add 5, and take the number back. And you get 5. Okay? I'm going to do another one. Okay? You ready? This one, you're going to have to do this by yourself. Like You're going to have to do this part of it, proving it with algebra. Oh my gosh, 21. 21. I'm not sure what you're saying. Why are you keep saying 20 to 1? You ready? Yep. Make sure to keep track. I'll write the steps up here because there's a lot of them. So you might want to pay attention. Take your number. Pick a number between, now it's going to be between 2 and 9. Between 2 and 9. Not 1, but 2 and 9 are fine. Anything from 2 to 9, including 2 or 9. Why can't I tell you and it's just a nice number. So take your number, whatever your number is, and multiply by 2. Now, if you've 
already have your birthday this year, then you're gonna add one number, and if you have it, you're gonna add another number. So if you have my birthday's in five days. Had your birthday. If you have had your birthday already this year, add 1,765. Oh my gosh. Did you have or haven't? Have. Have. Yes. Check yes. If you have not, okay, you're adding. Adding a number. If you have had it, add 1765. If you have not had your birthday, add 1764. Start writing it down. Oh, you can have the letters. Thank God. Subtract what? Was it subtracting? Hold on. We're going to be subtracting this. Subtract the year of your birth. Like, what year? You're talking about like the thousands, right? Oh, okay. 1,990 or 2,000, I don't know. What are you born? I was born Running through this again, I'm about to reveal it. Your number, multiply by 2, add 5, multiply by 50, add 1765 if you had your birthday, if not, add 1764. Subtract the year of your birth. Oh no, hold on, wait, I'm not done. Oh, I forgot. Boom. That is like. So, there's two parts to your number. The second part. Two numbers is your age, and the first is the number that you picked in the first one. Wait, what? I'm not 16. Oh, oh my gosh, I got it. But I'm not 16. I got it. Wait, what? Number's like 18. I'm not 80. That first one, like 4, would be the number you chose. I'm not 80. Oh, the number I chose. Oh, it is. Okay. So what's your number? 1,285. Did you subtract the year? Wait, okay, I'm so confused. If you didn't notice it first, so what you should be looking at right now, yeah. after you do so all the original numbers, 12. is a three-digit number. Uh, yeah. The first digit is the number you picked to start with, yeah. between two and nine in the second Oh three. my god. Nope. I don't know. I don't know. I have 1580. And I'm not 80. And I start with the number nine. Uh, yeah. I have the number nine. I have the number nine. What number did you choose? What number did you choose? Oh, you're stupid. For this number trick, it's just a trick, it's a little number trick, where I'm basically doing the same thing here as I did here, it's just a little more complicated, right? Here are just a few steps. Multiply by 2, add 10, divide by 2, well, that's the same as if I just took my number and I added 5, right? If I multiply by 2 and add 10, it's the same as not multiplying by 2 and adding half of 10. Is it a worksheet or a book work? So, paper. I just want to know, where did you actually I'm still explaining. Okay? So on a piece of paper, Bring back to me next time and turn in. You're going to explain how this trick works in the same way that I explained to you about this trick. Represent a number with X. 
Oh um, my! I got so it. take the number. Like, so I'll get you started. You start with the number X. What's the first thing you do? Choose number X. That's the next thing you do. Uh, Fine. You just keep going like that. Can I do this in class before like leave? Yeah. If you get it done, you get it done. That's what I'm doing right now. What are you doing? I'm passing on that.